Welcome to the CS Time Clock Web Interface Training Session 8, the Hardware Menu. In this CS Time Clock Training Session, we'll talk about the Hardware Menu. You can access the Hardware Menu from the left hand side of the screen. Under the Hardware Menu, we have Clock Menu Options. These should be left at the default setting as they change the way that the menus operate and there is no requirement to do that unless it's a specialised application. And in that case, this would be set up by one of our technicians. Same thing applies to the clock sub-menu options. They should be left by default. They should be left as the default settings. In the child clock section, you can see whatever child clocks are currently connected to your CS time clock. This lists one, which is the internal child clock that contains the reader for the clock, whether that's a fingerprint reader or a proximity reader. If you had other CS time clock child clocks connected, by RS485, then they would appear there as daisy chained devices. The next option is the peer clocks. Peer clocks are other CS time clocks that are connected via, that are connected over the local area network. Depending on the settings, these can act independently or they can act to replicate information between the clocks, including employees, all their clocking events, and their payroll and daily hours. Also under the hardware menu is the script section. These are Bundy scripts that are programmed by our technicians. These change the way that the buttons on the clock work and they're usually used for more complex operations where more advanced software is used such as job costing software or access control. These should only be configured by our service technicians. The next item is the set clock time. If the clock time is not accurate, you can change it here and press the set time button. If the reason why the time was not accurate was because there was no time server details entered into the system, the clock is likely to drift out in time again. So you should check the settings under the setup of the clock and ensure that the time server settings are correct. This was covered in the previous training session. The next option is the sirens. The clock has the capacity to switch sirens on and off and you can enter siren tables directly in the system by pressing the insert button. You specify the time you want the siren to go off in 24 hour time. You set which days of the week you want the siren to go off. You can specify specific clocks or you can specify all the clocks that are connected to this clock. You can select any combination of the relays and the internal clock buzzer. You may hook the clock up to relay one so you tick that box and also the buzzer if you want the buzzer to go off at the clock. Here you set the duration of the siren. Generally, if employees are coming back from work after a lunch break, for example, you would generally set that as a longer siren time than a siren time for them stopping for some reason, either lunch or the end of day. So you might set three seconds for a start of a break and five seconds at the end of a break. So it's obvious to the employee whether they're starting or finishing. So here we'll set five seconds, a description, you can put a, a comment to appear on the line of the clock itself. You can have some instructions appear on the clock display itself. And once you've done that, you can press add and it'll appear as one of the siren times in the siren schedule. That concludes this session on the hardware settings in the CS time clock.